Let's do this. Okay, so we're recording now and we are going over the notes. You can find these notes in the um, where, place where you turn them in right here, or you can find them on the announcements, either one. Um, so, so what? So this is all about human resources, this section. So what do you think of when you hear the phrase human resources? I think of Toby from the office. Um, the department of a company you hope you'll get a call from when you want to land an interview. For many people, human resources or HR means a gateway for getting hired. While HR responsibilities do include staffing, the HR function goes much deeper than just that. Human resources management involves a wide variety of activities. HR employees make sure you get paid, stay safe on the job, and have the tools you need to be uh, to succeed. Read on to learn more about the importance of human resources in any business, big or small. So if we go to the module, uh, again, just a quick reminder, make sure you got these notes out, make sure you're filling in the blank, and then submit them. I have not been really picky about how you submit these because uh, it, it just is hard really for some of y'all to turn it in on Chromebooks and things like that. So I'm not going to be picky. Um, this is kind of a long section, so just bear with me. Um, if you kind of follow along, again, this is where you submit it. If you follow along through all these, you will do well and you will not have to worry about anything. So just bear with me. It shouldn't take too long and I won't read them word for word. I'll probably summarize some stuff too. So human resources management activities. So a successful company has many resources it uses to accomplish its goals. It has facilities, uh, perhaps a small one-person office or location all over the globe. It's the cap it has capital, whether it's a $1,000 loan from mom and dad or millions from investors. And it has human resources, maybe just two uh, partners in business together or hundreds of thousand employees. Human resources are people who work to produce goods and services, and they are invaluable to a company. Human resource management is the process of planning, staffing, leading, and organizing those employees. Human resource management is a function of business as well as a department. Uh, in other words, bigger companies may have a great number of employees dedicated solely to managing human resources, but even in small businesses without an official HR department, uh, this important function still remains and is most likely managed by the owner. And even in big companies, human resource management is not contained solely within the HR department. Supervisors and managers across the organization also take some parts in managing human resources, although their level of involvement varies from business to business. Managing a business with human resources is a big job that only gets bigger as the company grows. Let's look at some of the main activities involved in this function. So, oh my. Um, Staffing. So a business is only as strong as its employees. So making sure appropriate staff is on hand is a main priority for human resource managers. Staffing involves more than just interviewing and hiring. It starts with the determining need uh, where the company is lacking the human resources it needs. So has an employee recently retired or transferred to another position? Has top management created an entirely new position? Basic stuff. Um, honestly, a lot of stuff we're going over in this class is common sense. I mean, human resource is getting resources that are humans. So you are basically hiring people for different jobs. So they have to determine what jobs need to be filled. Um, so have determined needs, human resource managers must determine job descriptions and specializations for each position in the company. A job description is an example of the responsibility and tasks associated with a specific job. It describes what an employee in position does. For example, a job description for a marketing assistant may uh, may list responsibilities such as preparing brochures and assembling consumer reports. A job specification, on the other hand, is an explanation of the skills, knowledge, and characteristics required for the job. It describes what an employee in that position should be. The marketing system position then may specify that the employee may have at least one year of experience and pay close attention to detail. Again, the main thing you need to hear now and know the difference between is a job description and a job specification. Um, so with all that being said, um, let's think about it this way. Um, was it this class I talked about, the pool where I worked? Yeah. yeah. So again, I, when I was kind of in charge of hiring the new people and I hired a bunch of seniors from Conley here, I gave them a job description. Really didn't have to give them a job specification because if you can breathe and communicate to people, you can basically do that job. So um, 
basically, um, but the job description was important. I had to tell them what they would be doing to see if they were interested. And I gave them a good job description. What made me angry and what would make a human resource person angry is if someone above me after I had made the job description tried to change the job description I gave the people. Now in a large business or a large company and even in a career job like the one I have, if my job description changes, you gotta roll with the punches sometimes in the real world, right? But for a part-time job where you're trying to get kids to stay on for the whole summer, you don't want to change the job description on people. And even in a career job where people could be kind of fluctuating, you don't want to change the job description on them. Has my job description changed since the pandemic's hit? Of course it has. Has my job specification kind of changed? It's changed for a lot of people. How many teachers in here use, I mean, how many teachers that y'all have are using Canvas for the first time? You might not know, but they probably, you can sometimes tell if they're not used to using Canvas or using all these online tools. Um, even myself, I'm, like I just said about the using Chromebooks, even I'm running into some errors that I usually don't run into because usually everyone's on a desktop. So I don't have to worry about that either. Um, so that being said, some of these are the things that change and sometimes you roll with them. Sometimes you have to move on. But if you change up the job description and job specification, but so much people may want to change the job. So you don't want to lose anybody because the human resources is looking for people again. Next, human resources managers must recruit candidates for the open position. Um, so recruiting is the part of staffing that involves seeking out and attracting qualified potential employees. HR managers have many different methods of recruitment and they will choose the one that uh, are most appropriate for their industry and position. Some examples include being present at job fairs, seeking recommendations from current employees or customers, placing classified ads, in the newspaper or on the internet job board. Um, yeah, so it depends on where you work. Um, for instance, um, as a when I was about to graduate from college, there was a um, job fair at uh, the convention center and all the county school systems basically from around North Carolina and even some from other states had come down and were trying to hire the most recent graduates from ECU. So we went and I obviously went to the Pitt County Schools table, but I went to a lot of different schools tables, um, private schools and charter academies were there as well. And they were trying to basically hire their people. And that's where HR came involved. They set up those booths and they tried to hire people. They also brought in, and again, like we talked about earlier, just there, just because there's an HR department doesn't mean other managers won't come in. Mr. Marr, for instance, was at the job fair and I got to talk to Mr. Marr while I was there. Um, so that being said, um, even though HR set probably all of that up for Pitt County Schools, they still wanted local managers or in this instance principals to go out and kind of see possibly some potential candidates uh, because the principals know what they need. Do we need a math teacher? Do we need a science teacher? Do we need a business teacher? All those kinds of things. So sometimes it's helpful to bring in the other managers who aren't necessarily part of HR. Um, when a pool of potential candidates has been identified, human resource managers must then begin the process of screening the applicants and selecting which ones to interview. So they're not just going to interview everybody. There might be, you know, around here, there might not be um, that many candidates for a job, but up in New York and then uh, like Los Angeles, all those big cities, um, Chicago, things like that, there's probably a lot of people who apply for the same job and they have to go out and probably try to narrow it down to a few people just to interview. Um, the interview process varies from business to business. Generally, human resources management conducts the initial interview with a candidate and then either recommends or does not recommend him or her for further interviews. Um, I technically had two interviews even for working here. So some large companies may even have more than two. It just depends. Um, I interviewed with Ms. just me and Mr. Marr at one point and then I interviewed Mr. Marr, uh, Ms. Hudson, who is the CTE department chair and Ms. Evans that they sat in. And then they showed me this room that I would probably be teaching in and all that. So that's how that interview worked even just for me. So you know big companies are going to have even a more extensive interview process. Uh, when the final candidate has been chosen, human resources management will extend the job offer with its specific uh, terms and conditions. Sometimes a candidate will try to negotiate part of the offer. Uh, when this happens, HR will be involved in the negotiations process. If the owner's first choice candidate does not accept the position, HR will work with the involved manager to choose another candidate or conduct further interviews. Human resource management involvement in staffing doesn't end when candidates are hired. There are still several uh, onboarding activities for complete, uh, to complete. 
such as employee orientation and variation, various types of paperwork, um, insurance, tax withholdings, direct deposit systems, uh, citizenship information, etc. So orientation also varies from business to business. It may involve giving the employee a tour of the facility and making introductions, giving the employee information about company procedures and policies. Let me tell you, Pitt County Schools if new employee orientation sucks. It really sucks. Because work days begin, let's just say like on August 12th, like official work days for teachers come back. You have three days at J.H. Rose High School Blech. that you have to stay at for three days, basically full. You're going in the morning and you don't leave till like three o'clock. It's basically like a full school day. And they teach you about how to be a teacher, which is kind of insane for the people who have gotten an education degree who spent four years learning how to be a teacher. And then you just spend three days also to learn how to be a teacher once more. Um, but I'm kidding, obviously, but um, I'm recording this. And so the county schools probably won't watch it and be really mad. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Never mind. Forget what I said. No, I'm kidding. But no, it is, it is, it's very helpful for some people. And I can understand from their perspective, they don't know what you learned at your university. Who knows what you learned at your university? So it can be very beneficial. And some people don't have good clinical teachers either. So that kind of comes into effect as well. Um, thanks. Yeah, I was like, I covered it up pretty well, I think. But uh, it is true. I had a very good clinical teacher. And some people I learned, like, at that thing, they're like, yeah, I don't know any of this stuff. And I was like, that's pretty sad that you don't know any of this stuff. Like, you should have learned this. But it does happen. Um, but anyway, you spend, like, two and a half days, technically, um, there. And then the last half day, you go back to your school. And your lead mentor, which is Miss Deans, um, the history teacher, I don't know if y'all have her, but she kind of showed us around the school and gave us a tour of the school um, and helped us out about things that would be going on in our school because you just learn basic Pitt County schools procedures at that. Um, and every school is a tad bit different. Um, it's just how it is. Uh, so yeah, so that's your orientation. Or at least that's what my orientation was like. Um, it was very, very long though. Um, so, and sometimes it's long, sometimes it's short. It just depends on the business you work for. I'm sure if you just go to a local company here in town their orientation is probably like quick and then it's just on the job training you're just learning as you're going that's how most small companies work um staffing responsibilities that also extend beyond just hiring and orient orienting new employees in addition they deal with various job changes that occur within the company this includes transfers promotions retirement resignations dismissals and layoffs each type of job change uh, creates work for hr managers they may need to fill positions quickly or offer sever severance packages and they also uh, conduct exit interviews, discussions with employees who are leaving uh, that are designed to gain feedback for the business. So again, when people are leaving, they're dealing with this, they're dealing with retirements, they're dealing with dismissals. And they would like to, if they all possible, can do these exit interviews because it's going to help them. Um, it's the same thing when we talk about project management. At the end of project management, you're going to look at what you did right and what you did wrong. They're looking at with this employee, hey, what do you think we did right, what we did wrong? Maybe they'll take up some of their, you know, descriptions. Maybe they won't. Um, it just depends on the situation. All right, so compensation and benefits. So human resource management is also responsible for overseeing compensation and benefits for all employees. Compensation is a pay for work completed. If com it, it comes in different forms. Uh, for different employees, some make hourly wages, others make year, yearly salary. Compensation may also include certain financial incentives such as commission or bonuses. Benefits compromise a significant uh, comprise a significant portion of the total package of package a company offers its employees. Uh, they are advantages employees receive in addition to their monetary compensation, such as health insurance, retirement accounts, paid vacations, and sick time, etc. Certain benefits may be required by law depending on the size of the company, while others are based on what the company can afford to offer. Like, I mean, some benefits can be just as simple as if you work at Taco Bell, you get a free, what do you get at Taco Bell? Uh, uh, like $7 worth of food. Yeah, so like that's a benefit you get. Is it like monthly, I'm assuming? Daily. The, oh, daily? Yeah, that's great. I don't even work at Taco Bell. Like, you know, but uh, um, yeah, so you get these little benefits like that. And it, like I said, it could be all the way up to health insurance or retirement. So just as small as you get some free food at the restaurant you're working at, uh, just depending on the size of your company. Trainings and development. 
So another main responsibility for human resource management is ensuring that employees are knowledgeable and productive. HR managers do this by overseeing training and professional development programs for the company. Every business has different training needs and HR managers uh, first task is to determine what they are. What training is required for new employees? How many employees must be trained all, uh, for the same position at the same time? Is training required because of new equipment uh, or work procedures, et cetera, et cetera. Um, for Pitt County Schools, we don't have HR leading our trainings because we are training on how to be better educators. And HR people usually, um, even if they did work in education, they're just not responsible for that. But in a large company, you may have HR come and talk to you about how to treat other employees because HR deals with that as well. If me and Nick work at Dunder Mifflin um, and I keep throwing his stapler and jello, then they may have, you know, uh, how do you treat your desk buddy or how do you treat that, uh, your people that work around you. Um, if we, if you watch The Office, you know, Toby always deals with the conflict um, between like Dwight and Jim. Um, yeah, nobody like it. You know, Tony grilled me and sometimes, and then he just went down to the weekend. So that's just how it goes. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're going to deal with all those things. So um, it's not just all about hiring or firing or, you know, people retiring. That all rhymed. I should be a rapper. Uh, check out my SoundCloud. Next, HR managers must determine what resources. That was funny. Uh, resources are available for training and development. Who will conduct the training? In many cases, on the job training for new employees. Uh, is supervised by another employee or mentor uh, in the same department. However, it's still up to human resources to arrange this in other circumstances. An HR trainer may take responsibility for this task. HR managers all, are also in charge of deciding what materials are needed. In some cases, it may be responsible for selecting purchase appropriate training materials. In other cases, however, HR managers must work with others in the company to develop training materials specific to the business. So again, if you've got a large company, then probably um, it's being created for you by the big HR department. If we're talking about like a Google or if we're talking about like McDonald's, those HR people are probably getting um, large directives from other people. Am I talking about Jeeps right now or trucks or whatever you're looking up, Nick? No. No, so why are you looking that up? I, I pay attention. I, boom, I roasted. That. Anyway. I can walk <laughs> that. Boom, roasted. Um, no, but anyway. So they're kind of responsible for it. And then smaller companies are going to be responsible for figuring out their own training and what they need to do. So if you have like a locally owned place, they're going to figure out, you know, hey, what do we need to train our employees about? Um, and then a lot of times, like it may be uh, racial inequality, things like that, um, maybe ageism cases, things like that. If they feel like a problem has come up in their work, um, HR is usually responsible for, you know, hey, let's, let's solve this and let's talk about it. Let's have a training. And that'll help everybody. Um, another aspect of training and development is per, uh, performance management and improvement. Employees need feedback on how they're performing in their jobs, uh, what they're excelling at, and how they can improve. Every company handles performance management a little differently, but human resources management uh, should oversee the process. This may involve developing a company-wide evaluation system, keeping records for personal uh, personnel files, and assisting supervisors with performance reviews. And that depends on the company. Not every company's run like that. But a lot of times HR will be involved in that. All right, so compliance. How close are we to the end of this? Is this it? No? Okay, so two more for you. Cool. Employee relations and what we're on right now. Compliance. So businesses must comply with many different laws and regulations. These vary on uh, the size of the company, where it's located, what industry it's in, and et cetera. Human resource managers oversee compliance issues for most companies. Uh, safety and health. So every company wants its workers to remain safety and healthy. Not only does this matter uh, to, for the employees personal, uh, personally, but it also keeps the company productive and spares many unnecessary expenses, like getting lawsuit because you didn't handle something in a proper way. I mean, times companies will go uh, above and beyond their legal obligations to promote workplace safety and health. They may offer wellness and weight management programs, on-site fitness centers, uh, support groups, focus physical and mental health issues, yada, yada, yada. And just here in Pitt County Schools, we have so many safe school trainings we don't know what to do with, uh, but they are beneficial in case that situation does come up. You hope you don't ever have to deal with these like someone bleeding or you falling out of a chair or things like that. I mean, we work in a fairly uh, safe environment, but you never know, accidents do happen. Um, so we have trainings on that. 
Pitt County Schools also offers an awesome way for us to get involved in some sports. So we have um, the kickball, softball. We had basketball last year. I was really excited about it. They got canceled because of COVID. Um, I was the co I was the captain of DH College basketball staff team. I was pretty excited about it. And then it got canceled. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I play on the softball team most years or most seasons, and I play on the um, kickball team most seasons. Um, I can. So um, that, that's just a, a wellness thing that basically Pitt County Schools offers for its employees. Um, and that's just to try and boost morale. It's also to try to keep their employees healthy. Uh, they also are very concerned about you getting hurt in it too, though. So you have to sign this waiver that you're not going to sue if you get hurt, which I mean, you take that risk when you walk out your door every day. But, uh, but there are those people in the world who will sue over about anything. So. Uh, but Pitt County Schools make sure they don't get sued, but at the same time, they're trying to offer you some cool stuff uh, that allows you to stay healthy. So interviewing issues, so job candidates have certain rights during applicants, uh, application interview processes that businesses must respect. They can't be asked questions that uh, pertain to their age, material, marital status, family plans, religion, belief, etc. Again, you can't, in the middle of a job interview, ask a woman if she's pregnant. Like, it's illegal, it's against laws. So, uh, you can't hire people off based off their religious beliefs. You can't not hire people based on their religious beliefs, things like that. Um, and HR just kind of is to there to stand by and make sure that that hiring process goes correctly. Um, because believe it or not, people do have prejudice in them sometimes. Um, and they may make a decision. And sometimes without even thinking about it, they may make a decision that um, was technically not morally correct because of some kind of um, just ethnicity, cultural, or something that uh, goes on with you. Uh, employment contracts, so not every employee is under contract for, uh, but for those who are, HR managers are responsible for understanding and administering the contract, so they're gonna kind of be in charge of that. Other employment laws, it would be impossible to list each and every law that applies to employment, but some of the main ones involve equal employment opportunities. If you've taken business law with me, which I think only Nick in here has, um, then we went over this section um, in business law. So, wow, things are starting to really, we just went over project management, which will be a course next year. Business law, we're talking about that now. We are killing it here in the business department these days. Uh, HR managers understand these laws and make sure uh, the company follows them. Cool, cool, cool. Last thing, this would be the stapler in the jello situation. Employee relations. So, for a company to be successful, employees must establish good working relationships both with each other and with managers and supervisors. Human resource management is responsible for making sure employee relationships remain positive and productive. One way of doing this is by handling complaints and mediating conflicts. Sometimes disputes arise between coworkers or between employee and a manager. When this happens, an HR representative can act as a mediator to resolve the conflict in a way that satisfies both parties. HR representatives also listen to employees' grievances, keep uh, records of them, and work to find appropriate solutions. Maintaining good employee relations may also involve certain assistance programs. These could include helping with short-term housing needs or new transferring employees, organizing carpools, or assisting employees with career and educational planning and decision. Employee assistance programs vary widely from company to company. Human resource manager, management is also involved in labor union relations at, um, at companies where unions are present. HR managers may help negotiate labor contracts and deal with uh, any re related issue problem in co companies in, uh, without labor unions. HR management functions similarly, but it's less formalized um, that in a way. Uh, so real quick to go to unions. I want to go over that and then I want to talk about something else. Um, so unions really, you don't worry about that. If y'all plan on working um, Honestly, in the South, you don't worry about unions. Um, if you're working up north somewhere in a northern state, you may have to deal with unions. The main reason for that is if you go back to um, the 1800s and into the early 1900s, most of what was in the South is farming. So people didn't have unions because they were just working on farms and the people at North were working in factories. Well, that's why they created unions. If we go back to some of those industrial revolution ages, we talk about the different unions that were formed to help. Um, and honestly, if you look at a map, we do this in business law. If you look at the union line um, of where there's unions and when there's not, um, it's literally the South and the North basically split. So, um, 
And I don't understand the union laws that well. I understand it well enough to teach business law, but because we don't have to really deal with it here in North Carolina, it's not something we really think about much. Um, but it is definitely something to think about if you were to move up to Pennsylvania or to New York and do a job there, um, there will be unions. And sometimes you have to be in a union to um, actually have that job. So that's something really important to think about. Um, when it comes to employee relations, um, it's really important for a manager concerned this is business management. We'll get on that note for a minute. It's really important for your employees to feel comfortable coming to you and talking to you. Um, I definitely feel comfortable going to Mr. Marr about any issue I have and talking to him. Um, and part of that is just because he's created an environment that allows you to feel that way, at least in my opinion. Um, he plays on the softball stuff. He does the kickball stuff. That's just one example of he's involved and that way you know he's you know he's interested and he wants to do stuff for the school um he gets the kona ice truck for us he's always really excited about that on one of the work days um and he gets us a kona ice truck and we get the kona ice stuff and it's not that it's that he's getting us kona ice it's that he cares enough to actually do something for us on a work day um and usually he tries to organize different food days things like that and tries to get that all worked out for us um just this morning, for instance, he's probably got a lot going on, but there were the leftovers from, um, there were leftovers from um, the, <coughs> excuse me, I'm like choking, from the academic breakfast, and he sent an email of, they said that the, some of the biscuits were left, and then he sent an email of which exact ones were left. Things like that show you your, your manager, or in this case, your principal, cares about the employees enough to just tell us what biscuits are up there. Like, what now? I think they're from um, Cat. What is it? I went to high school with the guy whose mom owns it, GK Cafe. I think is where they're from. They were last week from GK Cafe. Hey, what was the Rocky Road one that they were talking about? Yeah, I heard a lot about it. Yeah, I don't know what that was exactly, but I got the cheese one today. It was really good, and then I got a cinnamon raisin one later. It was really good. So. That's interesting. Uh, what, Rocky Road might be cinnamon raisin. I'm not sure. I don't know. Either way, they were good. But again, like I said, um, just stuff like that. You, you can tell your manager actually cares about his employees. Um, so, and that's important. Um, and that's for a lot of schools around here. Whenever we play kickball, a lot of times the principals are on the teams with the staff, and that shows that he, you know, if he's going to come out there or she's going to come out there to play with their. Um, play a sport with their staff. They obviously care about their staff. And that's important to do. Um, it makes employee relations a whole lot easier to handle. All right, so human, uh, lastly, human resources are the people who work to produce goods and services. Human resources management is the process of planning, staffing, le um, leading, and organizing employees. The main HR management activities include staffing, compensation, benefits, training, and development compliance and employee relationships. Pretty easy stuff. Oh yeah, you do need to do the total recall today. I did not put points in for that. So I'm gonna do that real quick um, and I'll add this to the announcements as well. So nothing too bad. It's probably not with so many questions. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, and this will go on the next six weeks. So don't worry about this. You're doing it today, but it won't be due till like next week. So no worries. Are, are there any questions on what we went over? Anything um, that y'all want to talk about? Um, for people on the recording, if you're watching this later, um, we can, uh, you can email me any questions. So I'm going to stop recording so y'all have.